Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial for Sound for More, it's Lear speaking. Today I'm going to introduce you to how you can do session recording and I'm also going to give you an introduction to the sequencer. Before I start, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. So let's kick off. Let's uh, uh, hold and swipe up on the first clip and let's import from the document picker a first audio loop, like so. And we accept the default settings. Let's also scroll up and uh, let's go to the playbook, the playback settings and let's set quantization play for stop now. Let's repeat the process for the second clip. Let's import a second audio loop like so. And also let's set um, these to have no quantization on play and stop as well. And finally, let's do that on a third uh, clip as well like so we imported that one and we set as well the playback setting for uh, for quantization to be none so now we can uh, set to play and we can click and start very quickly uh, three different clips so let's try <music> So if you look up here on the top right hand side, you have a button for recording, click on it. And here you have the option to do session recording and you can record audio, but you can also record a sequence. So let's start with recording audio. You can see at the bottom here, you have a configuration. So click on it and this is where you can choose what you want to record. So you can say combine the input and output, combine the output, only the combined input, individual colors or tracks or even to actually record individual audio sources so i'm going to show you some of these not all of them let's start with the first one combined input output and um, you can see also the top here you have a switch which says looseless recording if you activate that it changes it will change the compression of what it has been recorded but let's leave it as a switched off so you have compression enabled so we'll leave these as combined input and output and we go back, we click start recording. Now we will start recording. Also, I want to mention that I have disabled the microphone, so it will be only recording what uh, is on the clip. So let's try. Okay, you can see the button here, a, um, the recording button is red. Let's click on it. So we'll have stopped the recording because it has gone now to white. If we go to the folder here, a menu, we click on recordings. You can see you have a recording which has been done today. You have a button here for play, click on play, and you will hear the recording. It's coming. Okay, perfect. We can pause that or stop. You can also click on the recording itself and you see the waveform of what is being recorded. And you can see here that there was a long pause at the beginning because I was actually talking. And this is where you can click play again and you can play what is being recorded. You can also use uh, um, the different handles here, left and right. And as you activate them, you have a, a button um, at the bottom to select trim, so you can trim actually which has been recorded. And of course, up here you have the ability to actually export actually your recording for to use with other application. Let's go back. So let's we click here on the top left hand side and go back to recording. Let's click and hold swipe to the left like so, and we can delete that recording. So that's one way. And let's click outside and let's go back to recording. And now let's do another audio recording, but we change the configuration. So we're going to record individual color groups. So let's try, let's click start for recording. Okay, let's stop. And now let's go back and check our recording. We have a file again, we can click play to listen, of course. Yeah, it has been recorded, perfect. But now let's click on it. 
And as you can see, you have three different waveforms which correspond to the different colors that um, have been recorded. So, which is quite nice. You can click play, of course, to listen. You can mute the individual track here, which is really nice. You can also export, if you select here, the option on the right hand side, individual colors or, or tracks. And of course you can as well export the entire thing, clicking here on the top uh, export button option. So let's go back and let's uh, click and hold and swipe to the left and delete that as well. So as you can see, it's quite nice. You have a different option to record audio. And of course you combine the two or many of them. For example, you could combine um, to record combined input and output, but also having individual color groups. And you see actually that it will give you, in this case, not only the three tracks here played, but it will give you also combined one, a fourth one. So that's really nice and really handy. Additionally, you have uh, the ability to record a sequence. So I'm going to click start recording. You will hear a metronome that will kick off and then we go from there. Okay, let's click stop there. And um, as you can see, something has appeared here uh, on the left hand side of the play button. It says SEQ for sequencer. Okay, so and also the button here, you see a little dot here on this um, icon, which is the icon for the sequencer. So let's click on it. And uh, what you see here is a representation of all your colors or tracks, okay, vertically. It's practically like a DO representation. And you see um, the two, um, if you like, um, um, clips which have been recorded within time. So let me show you, let's click play. Which is quite nice, isn't it? You can also deselect sequencing. There in that case, it will not play because you, the sequencer will be not uh, uh, enable. On the left hand side of each track, you can solo that track like that, or you can mute the track as well. You can click on each individual uh, recording for each clip, you, and it will give you the option to delete, copy, quantize. If you copy uh, that part, whenever you actually move your hand here, you can then select paste to actually paste what you have copied, which is very useful indeed. As well, you can, at the bottom here, uh, select uh, to have a loop in enable or not. In that case, it will create a loop like so. We can, of course, disable it. Another way to do that would be to move the endo like so, right? Click on it and then select loop from here and it will create a loop from there. And then, of course, you have to enable it as well. You can, of course, change the duration here, go into the handles and change the loop duration. And you can do the same also on your recording here. You can change how much you want of that clip to be played. And um, when the play, the length is finished, you will start to repeat um, the um, clip recording. In this case, it's just been imported, right? Okay, so something else also I wanted to show you. In this case, I've done a recording of the sequence, but I have a recording only the first two clip. So what you can you can also do is insert into the sequencer some of the recording manually from the clip. So in this case, let's choose the green one. So let's just click somewhere like that and click again. And you will see the clips which has been inserted on that particular sequencer track. You can move left and right. You can pinch in and out, things like that. And then of course you can resize. So that's a nice way to actually, as you can see, to insert uh, actually uh, the clips themselves inside the sequencer. When you have loop enable and you click play, what you will see is that um, uh, the play button changes uh, um, to have a configuration that will allow you to play the loop or just play normally without going through the loop and just a normal sequence. So. 
let, let me show you. Click on it, you see it's cycled. And when you click again, it will just go normal, uh, back to play normally instead of being uh, instead of playing the loop, which means that when it comes to the end of the loop, it will continue to play. So let me show you. So as you can see, it's actually not looping back because I have disabled the play here for the loop, but which is the first one. When you click play, you see there is the loop. And as you can see, it started again, so the loop was actually working. Something else as well that you can do, if you don't have anything in any of the loop with um, a recording, like for example, the blue one. So what you can also do is go to the blue color track, click on it and create an empty uh, region, if you like. And then you see this option for arm, click on it, select it, and you can arm that for recording. You can also set the length. And then if you have an input um, set for the mixer, of course you can record. So let me go back to the mixer, other a hardware input and record something. Three, four. So I stop there, as you can see, I have a recording there. So let's click play and I'm going to remove also the microphone. Like so. Okay, perfect. Three, four. So as you can see, you have different options to actually use the sequencer for a normal re-recording of a sequence directly from the loops. And then you can also add the clip um, themselves uh, directly on the sequencer. And you can also add your own recording as well, which goes back to the different loops, because if I go back to the loop view, you can see on the color blue now you have recording. OK, um, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So now you know how to do session recording and you had an introduction to the sequencer as well. Thank you. Bye.